the United States wins its most medals ever in a Winter Games, and Canada leads the gold medal count. The night train ends a 62-year drought for American gold in four-man bobsled. You know, this is great, but I think that uh, it kind of sums up what we have together. The big event today isn't closing ceremonies. We're in Canada, and the home team is in the gold medal game against the United States. Welcome to Vancouver Today. I'm Reed Scherner. And I'm Christine Brennan. Stephen Holcomb and the U.S. bobsled team posted the fastest times on the track in the first three heats and then safely coasted down the Whistler Sliding Center with an insurmountable lead. The night train led Germany by about four-tenths of a second. By comparison, the third-place Canadian team trailed Germany by one-hundredth of a second. It's the first bobsled gold for the U.S. since 1948. Coming out, we wanted to, sit, to go down the first run and make a, make a statement and make sure that they knew we were there to play. The weight of this thing kind of wakes you up. It, it gives you a jolt in the back of the neck. But, uh, yeah, I, it really, it's, it's a surreal feeling. If they can do it and if, and if these guys can go out in order to combine and, and medal and win and do things they've never done before, it, it makes it that much more real that, it's, that you could actually do it. You know, well, ending the drought is huge. I mean, that's, uh, it finally, you know, puts us back on the map. It shows that we're a contender. Um, you know, the United States used to be, you know, a, a major player back, you know, back in the, in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, 50s. Um, and then we kind of, you know, lost momentum a little bit, and our program suffered. And, and now we're on our way back, and it's just huge to finally, you know, break through and get, get that the gold medal that we've been, you know, str striving for. But I think we hit 95.1 miles an hour this weekend. That's, uh, that's pretty quick, especially when the curves are only a few meters apart. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, this track is tricky. I mean, there's nowhere else in the world that you can hit these speeds. Couldn't be more impressed with what he did with us this weekend, and uh, you know, couldn't be obviously more happy with the result. It's a lot of responsibility. You know, these three guys—they're not only they're just sitting behind me, but they're not even looking. Um, they're just hoping I'm doing a good job up there. You know, I'm actually getting a fir bird's eye, you know, a first-hand view of, of what's when things start to go wrong and what's going on, and they're just kind of you know, put their trust in me and their faith in me, and I, I do the best that I can. So there's a little bit of stress, and as you can see, I've kind of lost my hair over the years, uh, and I, I, blame, I blame them. Canada has won 13 gold medals with the possibility of winning one more Sunday's men's gold medal hockey game. Canada's tied with Norway and the Soviet Union for the most gold medals ever won in a single Winter Games. But the U.S. has set a different kind of record, the most medals ever won at a Winter Games by a single country. With yesterday's bobsled gold and at least a silver in today's hockey game, the U.S. tops the chart with 37 medals. The United States Olympic Committee recognized the athletes' accomplishments. The team has done a phenomenal job. These athletes have made the entire country proud, uh, and, and we couldn't be happier with their performance. It's, it's just an awesome experience, and we have them to thank for this. You know, we're, we're very, very pleased with the results. Uh, I think Almost no matter what our projections were, it would be hard to deny the fact that we've exceeded, um, exceeded our uh, expectations here. We've had a fantastic games, um, very, uh, you know, very good on the field of play and off the field of play. So um, absolutely the team performed fantastically, but you know, we expected them to perform fantastically and um, they, they did even better than we thought they would. This is my third Olympic Games and um you know, like Apollo said, I'm proud to be a part of uh, any Olympic team, but to see the success that we've had is, is really inspiring. And, um, you know, throughout these games, I've been watching uh, all of the U.S. athletes do so well, and it's been, it's been so cool to watch the American flag go up on the podium so many times. And it seems like every single competition, there, there's someone from the U.S. up on the podium. And, and um, all the stories that go behind uh, all the success and all the hard work that everyone's put in is really paying off. And it's just, for me as an athlete and as a spectator, it's, it's very inspiring to see. Okay, Christine, you own the podium now. So <laughs> yeah. bigger deal, gold? or bigger deal overall medal count? Overall, Reid, it has always been the overall medal count. Um, uh, that's what on the podium means. Podium, of course, is gold, silver, bronze. Uh, maybe Canada wants to amend that to own the top of the podium. Uh, and and uh, make no mistake about it, their second week has been terrific, Canada's has, and they have won a lot of gold medals. But everywhere you look, if you look in uh, David Walashinsky's book, which of course is the Bible for you and me and all of us who cover the Olympics, uh, all the totals are based on gold, silver, and bronze added together. So for the United States, this is an incredible moment. 
I mean, to think that the U.S. would come in here with kind of lowered expectations, would win the medal count, and would also become the biggest medal winning nation ever at a Winter Olympic Games. That's pretty significant and a, gr and a great, great games for the United States. Low expectation, high medal count, good combination. <laughs> yeah, that's yes. exactly the kind of thing you want. Yeah. And Canada set itself up with that on the podium thing, which was so un-Canadian. Uh, you know, the Canadians became brash and bold and, and confident beyond their means, really. The United States kind of played it low key. So we had a role reversal and it, it certainly, uh, uh, you know, hood, uh, stood the United States in very good stead that, that you would have that kind of finish. So I think for the U.S. it's been a magnificent game. Canada has reclaimed uh, some honor in the last week, but the podium uh, belongs to that country, that little neighbor to the south of Canada. A little glory for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. In long track, the U.S. men's team pursuit took silver yesterday, trailing gold medal winning Canada by two tenths of a second. Chad Hedrick won his fifth and final Olympic medal in the race. The women's long track team came in fourth. Hockey starts at noon here, 3 p.m. Eastern. It's a rematch of last week's Canada-U.S. game, but hockey writer Kevin Allen warns us not to expect a repeat. Even though the U.S. beat Canada just a week ago in the Olympic Games, Beating them the second time will be a lot more difficult. Both of these teams really are different teams than they were a week ago. From the Americans' viewpoint, they've come together as a team. Canada back then had uh, Marty Brodeur in goal. They've since the changed to Roberto Luongo, and that seems to have solidified that position. I think because Canada was the favorite and has been beaten by U.S., I think they'll be taking them more seriously. I think they know they've got to come out stronger than they did. They figured out perhaps an antidote to deal with the U.S.'s beat. I think you'll see them also trying to take advantage of their size and physical play more than they did for the last time. And from the U.S. perspective, they know that the last time they beat Canada, Ryan Miller played uh, the role as the hero. And I think they realize this time they're going to have to find a different way to beat them than a star goalkeeper. I think you'll see them put a little more pressure on the Canadian D, try to create turnovers and try to find a way to beat Canada at its own game. Canadian officials have called the spontaneous nightly street parties in downtown Vancouver, where about 200,000 people waving red and white flags show up every night, a genuine surprise. In the United States, NBC's Olympics coverage has twice beaten American Idol. I think this is number 14 on the Olympics for you, so put Vancouver on the scale, successful or not. Oh, very successful, Reid. I, I thought, you know, they've done a great job. And again, those ratings, you know, for NBC to beat American Idol twice, that, that's significant because the last few games that's gone the other direction uh, for with American Idol winning. You've got a February Olympics, a lot of people are snowed in, uh, especially on the East Coast. So th it makes sense to have people watching. It's, these are the games of ice and snow, and you, these athletes drop into our lives for 16 days, and then they, they go, they, they never overstay their welcome, often never to be seen again. That's the allure, and I think that works so well here. I also think because the U.S. had such a strong Olympics that people wanted to watch. U.S. winning medals, hey, that's a, that's a good thing. So while a lot of the events were taped for the evening, you had people listening on the radio or hearing on the news that the U.S. Lindsey Vaughn wins a downhill or whatever, well then they want to see that. So I think that's a lot of it. As for the street scene, you know, you and I run the gauntlet, of course, every day to get, to get in here for our show, and, and it's, um, it's kind of mystifying. I mean, it's, it's a bad, I, I gotta say this, Reid, it's like a bad frat party, and, and I don't know about you, I thought I left that behind me. Um, I, I understand the excitement, I understand why people want to be here, I think that's great. But the screaming and the yelling and the drunkenness, um, in Atlanta in 1996, uh, we, we talked about how, what a bad county fair atmosphere it was, uh, and that that's something the Atlanta games have to live with forever. Um, and that's not a positive. And I would say the same thing here, that this street scene will be remembered in a uh, negative way. Does it ruin Vancouver's games? No. Does it change what we think about the, the competition, the U.S. performance? No. But I think it adds just a little bit of a footnote, and it's not a pleasant footnote. Right. Like a college paper, we get a passing grade, but a little red ink marked <laughs> down for penmanship. You got that right. Okay. Exactly. I'm getting a little misty, because if you're counting, as I clearly am, we've got one installment of Vancouver Today left. We're leaving you with the scene at minus five, the coldest bar here in Vancouver, where everything, even the drinking glasses, are made from ice. We make one promise, Christine and I will be back tomorrow. It's $20.10 to get in. It includes a cocktail when you're in here. We did 2010 for the year of the Olympics. So we got four.
tour of the cocktails going for you? We tried to cater to everybody, get a little, uh, you know, some of the names with some of the things going on in the Olympics. A little sour raspberry, a little by apple thon. Seems to be the most popular, the Nordic combined. People come in, have a drink. Some people are staying for two. Depends how much of a hearty person you are or where you're from. Um, and they're having a good time. When we open up the place, it's usually about minus 17, minus 18. That's having it closed for the evening. So once you get a few bodies in here, from 3 o'clock on, it started to drop down. We're now at minus 9.7. When I opened the doors at 3, we were still at minus 15. So we're hoping to get to minus 5. We're going to give it another 2-3 hours to get there and hope we get some more warm bodies in here to make it happen. <laughs> Although I've lived in Canada for 27 years, this is the first time I've ever been in an igloo. So uh, it's lots of fun. There's uh, ice sculptures everywhere, and all the things that we see as uh, Canadian culture icons are in ice. So it's uh, it's lots of fun to see it and to be able to drink out of an uh, ice glass. The first time I've ever been in a sub zero bar. I was expecting the rest of Canada to be a bit more like this, especially for the Winter Olympics. But actually, it's warmer in Canada than I thought. So it's good to have some feeling of winter here during the Olympics. We've tried every drink here. We've tried the Cool Runnings, we've tried the Nordic Combined, the Bi Apples on, and I'm missing one. Hurry hard! That's it! They're all awesome, and everyone here is having a blast. Music, and I, I don't feel the cold anymore.